What is your name, please? My name is Pavel Monat. My name is Pavel Monat. My name is Pavel Monat. Only one of these men is the real Pavel Monat. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, the host of the popular morning television show, Save When, Art James, and Kitty Carlisle. On to tell the truth with your host, Bud Collier. once again to, to Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Salem Cigarettes. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Hi. Bud. Yeah, what's, Hi. What's, what's, it's uh, a pleasure to welcome you tonight. Thank you, Bud. To our show. Yes, it's good to be here with good people, and I'm very calm and collected and ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom, I didn't mean to interrupt you. You started to say something. What's going on up there with those fellas? What's Ooh. going on up there with what fellas? With the fellas in the masks and the hoods well, and things. you want to find out? He's not going to tell you. Give me a long range to stand up. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Show you that I'm not going to hold back anything from you. Open up your envelopes of affidavits. Take out that first one and follow along with me, if you will. I, Pavel Monat, to avoid recognition, must not show my face on television. I was born and raised in Poland, and from 1955 to 1958, I was assigned to the Polish Embassy in Washington, D.C. as military attaché. Throughout those years, I operated not only as a diplomat, but also as a communist spy. In 1958, I was reassigned to Poland. After a year there, I took my wife and son on a vacation to Vienna. We went to the American Embassy and asked for political asylum. Since then, I have been living in the United States, and the Polish government has sentenced me to death on grounds of treason. Signed, Pavel Monat. <laughs> That explains the masks panel. These three gentlemen all claiming to be Pavel Monat, former communist spy. And we'll start this round of questioning with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Monat, number one, you spied for Poland against the United States when you were attached to the embassy in Washington? Yes, okay. I did. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Monat, number two, when you said you wanted asylum here, did they, they check up on you quite a bit? They did. I see. Uh, number three, where is Lublin? Lublin? Yes. It's in Poland. Thank you. Uh, number one, who is the premier of Poland? Uh, Mr. Uh, Cyrankiewicz. Thank you. Number two, what's Kalsaba? <laughs> Never heard. Uh, mm. Art. First of all, I want to thank Peggy for asking half the questions I wrote down. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Number one, what is the, um, the worth of a zloty? Uh, I don't know exactly now. Uh, number two, what is the equivalent in the American exchange of a zloty? I don't know. Number three? I believe it's about uh, 14 cents. Number one, what, is the, uh, what are some of the countries that encircled Poland? Um, it is Soviet Union. Uh... What province of the Soviet Union touches upon the eastern border of Poland? Uh, Number two, do you know the that? That's uh, on the eastern border. Did you on say? the eastern border the of eastern Poland. Eastern border yes. of Poland. That's the Baltics. Number three. Okay. Kitty. Uh, number three. Did Paderewski ever hold a political position in Poland? Oh yes. Will, will yes. you tell me what it was? It was the premier. Uh, number two. Who is Gomulka? He's the secretary of the party. Number one. When you took your wife and family on vacation, so called, to Vienna. Uh, was it a dangerous trip? It was. Number two, how did you make this trip? With train. By train. Uh, number three, were you stopped by anyone en route? No. And you were given asylum immediately? In effect. I'm sorry? In effect. In effect. Number one, who did you see in the American embassy in Vienna? I saw the military attaché and his assistant. Number two, did you see the ambassador? No, I saw Tom Poston. Tom? <laughs> I'm very sorry that we seem to be at odds with Poland, 
now at this time. I remember uh, that, that during the war, the Polish flyers were some of the finest flyers that, that were ever got into an airplane. Here, here. That's true. And uh, uh, number two, I wonder if you could tell me where the Polish flying headquarters were in England. I don't recall. Uh, number one, do you have any uh, idea about that? I don't know. Thank you. Number three, what is the uh, Polish corridor? It's a strip of the country. Uh, uh, when was that, uh, uh, when did that exist, number three? Uh, since the First World War. Uh, number two, what was, thank you. That's it, time is gone. No for the time for questions, it's time to mark those ballots. So kindly do so, if you will, panel. Mark them at once and without change, and of course, without consultation. None whatsoever, and mark as you go for number one, number two, or number three. Team of challengers will receive the customary $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote in this first round? I voted for number three because he looks like a man who would... <laughs> <laughs> I thought that the, the I used uh, Mr. James' uh, uh, questions as my criterion. Mm. The other two didn't know some of the things that uh, Art asked, and uh, I thought number three did. Peggy. Uh, I voted for number three as well. See, that question I asked, that kubasa is a sausage. But maybe I don't know the right name of it. But number three was the only one I didn't ask that question to. <laughs> so I voted for him. Uh, all right, what is your selection? Uh, my question was, um, my reason for selecting number three is based on uh, Zloty primarily, the um, the money thing. Mm -hmm. And yes, Kitty. I voted for number three too, um, uh, based on the uh, question about who was the premier and about Paderewski. And number three also knew the Zloty, I think. Yes. At least she gave an answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I voted for number three. All right, there we have it. Unanimous for number three. Let's get to the matter of the truth right now and learn which one of these gentlemen uh, is the former communist spy. So will the real Pavel Monat please stand up? Oh. Oh. If you are fascinated with uh, Pavel Monat's story, as I am, you'll be interested to know that his book, uh, entitled Spy in the United States, Spy in the U.S., is published by Harper and Row. Now, number two, I'm sure you're not a communist spy, are you? No, sir. Well, then, would you uh, kindly take your mask off and... <laughs> What's the matter, Peggy? It's a boy what he won't do for publicity. <laughs> and he's Khrushchev. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out his real name now. What is your real name, My sir? My name is Oscar Jordan. I'm a painting contractor in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Now, number three, you got all the votes. What is your real name, please? And what do you do? Uh, my name is Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan? <laughs> Yes, Henry will treasure this night for a long time. <laughs> I the can night see it now, and I've got a secret. He was a communist spy, to tell the truth. <laughs> the night he skunked the panel. Oh, <laughs>
Beautiful job, Henry. <laughs> Beautiful job, all of you. It was very nice. Why he didn't know what his lobby was? I beg your pardon? What about this lobby? How come he didn't really know? Yes. Uh, well, you want to ask him now? Uh, the panel want to know why you didn't know the value of this lobby. Uh, I didn't uh, know the value of this lobby. <laughs> it has changed so much in the it past? It has changed almost every couple of two weeks. No. Ah, so it was thank a... you. Well, of course, we don't have to do much about checking the score. You did the works, fellas. You got them for the whole bit, and that's $1,000 from Salem Cigarettes, as well as a carton of Salem. I'll <laughs> bet. Thanks for being with us. Good night, and God bless you. You know, even in the midst of winter, you are this close to springtime freshness. Now, watch.